The following, the following interview was conducted with Dennis J. Wiedenauer, Professor Emeritus of Management for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Wednesday, October 28, 2009 in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome, Dr. Wiedenauer, and thank you. Well, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, let's start if you'll tell us where and when you were born and your parents and okay. early years. Okay, you encouraged me to think about things I hadn't gone Sounds through. Sounds good. Time. Kind of I, brings it all back into focus. I was born in 1936, and I was born in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And uh, the reason there, my father was a minister in the Christian Reformed Church. And he had been, he went to Calvin College and Calvin Seminary in Grand Rapids at that time. And then he went out and became a minister at uh, several churches in Iowa and Minnesota. Then he came back to Grand Rapids, and shortly thereafter, he came to this church in Grand Rapids, and it was on Dennis Avenue. Well, I was born shortly thereafter, and therefore that's my name, Dennis, whether I like it or not. You and Martin Jeff, you got names that after, streets after you. <laughs> so that's, that's how it came, and uh, I stayed there until I was about four or five years. Then he moved, he was a minister at that time, and he went off to... Uh, Princeton for a while and got advanced degrees for him. And he was a minister for a while there and then he went to Calvin College and became a professor there on theology. Meanwhile, we, I stayed in Grand Rapids. I was a, mem a, a, a son of a preacher, but he stayed in the same area all the time and then I went to Calvin College. And uh, before that, I went to Grand Rapids is a, a very Dutch and a very Christian Reformed church. And uh, I went to Christian schools there and then the high, and the Christian high school, which is the largest high school in Grand Rapids. There are about eight of them, but these are all these Dutch people. And then, not surprisingly, since my father went to Calvin College, I went to Calvin College also. And I did not want to be a minister, and I did not become a minister, and I didn't know what I wanted to be. But uh, I studied towards economics and uh, study there and finish. Did you live on campus or did you live at home? No, we lived in a home. Okay. Yeah. And so we uh, decided to do that and then I, I left and finished my uh, degree from Calvin College. So I thought, what shall I do? Well, I went out to, uh, uni to uh, University of Michigan, I'm sorry, University of Chicago and got a degree there, a master's degree. And it took two years for that. And then I came back and I was in that period of time when there were some wars. And so I had to go in, so I, I went, I did, they didn't ask me, I went into a program that was a special six year program, but you're only in for six weeks, uh, six months. And so we were kind of between the wars and so I did go to that. And, I stayed there for six months, and then I was still in that program for a while. And uh, let's see now, where am I? Finished my master's degree, and uh, came back to the military, and I worked for Heckman's Biscuit, which is a large his biscuit company in Grand Rapids, and in Ohio, and all those places. Worked there for six months, because when I was in college, I worked there at that company. The first time I worked on where they made the dough and all that, but the next four, Three years, I went to, in the summer, while I was in college, to their area, Muskegon, uh, Chicago, not Chicago, Detroit, and about eight different places. And I would come in, and I'd take in the money and bill all the things. And they gave me that opportunity. But I was really lonely. I was only 20 years old, living Doing out all there. This stuff. Got all the money, put it in, and they trusted me. I, I, my whole summer for three years was to go to various places in Michigan and a couple in Ohio. And I was the manager then in terms of the money and all that. Sure. And then I finally graduated. Went, as I said, I went to a uh, <clears throat> University of Chicago. How'd you happen to select that? Well, my parents were originally from Grand Rapids, from oh. Chicago. Oh, okay. And University of Chicago is always a very good school. Sure, oh sure. So I went there. Then I came back and uh, I taught one year of high school. And on the flyer in that taught economics, I, in, the, in the office of the faculty, there was a sign, uh, economics education, 
in here in Lafayette at this university. And I wasn't married or anything. I saw that flyer and they would give you support money. So I signed in and uh, that's how I got down there. I came down there and... and uh, what year was that event probably? That was about, oh, about 19... 35, I think it was, 35. And 39 would be longer than that because you got out of college in the 50s, didn't you? Yeah, but I was in the military oh, and I okay. was there for a couple of years okay. and I taught in high school for a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, Larry Senish, I don't know if you remember I, Larry Senish, had this program. And that's why I came. And I didn't know anything about it. I was not married. I had no, so I went down there. And I got to know Larry Senish and I started working with him. And uh, I decided I'll, while I was there, I'll get a master's degree or a PhD in economics and work with him. So I did that, but he was a very demanding person. I loved him, but uh, I worked very hard with him all the time, and it took me about four or five months to do it because I was working with him all the time. And that was on economics education. And he was quite unique because he was interested in economics education from K through high school. And so I worked with him and happily uh, the money came from that program all the time. And uh, ultimately, later on, Larry left and moved to Colorado. And then I finished my degree, <clears throat> and I was about ready to, this was in, in the early uh, 60s, I started looking for a job. And uh, no, it was early 70s, I think it was, because I had been there in the 60s. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I also got to know the, the dean there pretty well and the associate dean and, and uh, they came to me and said, well, why don't you teach here at Purdue for a while? Because as a TA, I was teaching and, and did quite, quite a bit of that and it turned out pretty well. And uh, so I started looking around, but they gave me a deal that was better than any of the other places and I, I really didn't want to do it. And I met my wife uh, about four years earlier when I was teaching. She was in my class, and after she had finished her class, I got to know her better and married her. And she teaches kindergarten. So we decided, well, they gave us a pretty good program and better than some of the other options. Or Those were the times when you could go almost anywhere you wanted. But this was a good program, and I liked the community. And so I started teaching, and I did that. and. Uh, the first dean of the School of Management, M. Weiler, uh, he was a good friend of mine, and then he retired at that point. And then he just didn't want to retire completely, but he wanted to teach. So he and I taught together in some of the large lectures, the two of us. So we became very close. And while we were there, we wrote a book for students. Uh, to remind me, I brought it with me. And again, we are involved in economics education and helping students, and so we had a textbook, we had a manual for the faculty members. We had books for the students, and the whole package, and very comprehensive. But we worked on that very heavily. And it did well, and it sold well, and it was used quite, and made a little bit of money out of it. At two or three, ex, at three, at three, three different times we did it. And uh, so I became a very good friend of M. Weiler, who was the founding dean. And then his, his associate dean then became the dean, and I became a close friend of him, too. That's John Day. John Day, right. And uh, at that point, you know, I said, what do I really want to do? Well, before I knew it, I had become a full professor. And it went up fairly fast because I was very successful, uh, not only uh, fairly well in teaching, I, I think I'll talk about that in just a moment, remind me if I don't. But we got a lot of resources for doing what I wanted to do, and it was very attractive here. And uh, we had no trouble getting outside. I had one grant of $600,000 on economics education. And we traveled all over the country developing programs. And we went to Europe. We went to uh, Japan. We went to China. And uh, things just worked so beautifully. It was the all people, falling into place. Really they were neat. all in economics education. And I enjoyed what I did. And Emma Weiler became a very close friend of mine. And, uh, Unfortunately, he died some years after that, but he and I were really, really close together. And, Let me uh, interrupt for a minute. The facility at that time, where were you located, though? Because uh, the Craner building I started doesn't exist in the, today. Oh, I started in the old building there. You know where that old one was? Pierce Hall? 
or no. Stanley Calder or the one that was over over in that general area. That old it, ugly little place. That sort of in the back, kind yes, of the behind back board. Room. Yes, glass of 50 that's where project. I first started, and I had my first. <laughs> and as a graduate student, I had an office off of it in the library where the, our friend John Haukes John Haukes, and that's where I met him. <laughs> and my office happened to be into the library of all the <laughs> strange things. But, you know, there wasn't a lot of space for those things in those days. <laughs> and I got to know him, and, of course, he was of Dutch background. Sure, sure. So he's, he's, that's right how I got to be a friend. But then I did that, and then M. Weiler was involved in getting the building here. And he had one of his wealthy people in Indianapolis that, that did it for him. A story that a lot of people didn't know about it was that this fellow really liked M. Weiler, but he wanted to make sure it worked. So he said, I'm going to give you two, $2 million, and uh, you have to pay for a million. If it works, you don't. And of course, it worked beautifully, but he, he made it tough for him. And then M. and I began. We bought some Williams, textbooks. Right. We got through generations and really had a wonderful time. That was a well, plus for you because he'd been in the field a lot longer yes, than you had. and gave you got, right. you know, worked along with you. That's great. And then. Uh, by then I had moved up and I had become an associate professor and a full professor and very successful in the kinds of activities I was doing and did a lot of traveling involved in economics education with business schools all over the country. And oh, let's see, what came next then? Uh, Can I ask you just to sure, uh, one please moment? Sure, please, That uh, Center for Economics Edu Education, yes. I thought that researchers might be interested. Does that still exist? today? Or? Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah, it's not in the school there. There's another chap, and I can't think of his name, who runs it now. It, okay. It's not as active as it was okay. in those days, because I think we solved some of the problems. Sure. But uh, then, let's see, I was there. M. Weiler was the dean, and then he stepped off, and I got to, that's how I learned and worked with him. And uh, the uh, John, uh, John, Day. John Day then became the dean. And John was a great friend as well. And John kept me there. And uh, then uh, John left, and uh, they needed someone to do a new dean. And they started searching for them. And they ran into a couple, but, but none of them very acted very well. And between the two, that they were both let go fairly soon. Uh, I then became the interim between the two, and then when the second wouldn't go, uh, the dean came to me and said, hey, why don't you just become the dean? Well, and I said, you know, you got to get approval from all the faculty and all that and those kinds of things, but deans had more powerful then than they do now. And, uh, and I thought, well, I, I suppose that would be interesting because I did have some experience now with it. Right. They and you've been the interim and associate as well. Yeah, and so then, uh, then I took it. And, uh, and there I was. And, you know, you never 1990, there you go. Yeah, you never know how all these things. And in the meantime, I had a wonderful time teaching and developing books and uh, working with people all over the country who were interested in economics education. And there was a whole group of people that, and as I said, we traveled all over. And had was a there a time. lack, a lack of, of uh, instruction in this area yes. at the primary and yes. secondary level? None of the schools had. And so we promoted more of it to do that. And it became quite successful. Mm -hmm. Six, su successful. And the economics department grew it in the school yeah. too. And so then ultimately I came to the dean's office and of course then that changed my my whole program and I no longer taught. Uh, I, I did enjoy teaching. Uh, I went back to see one. I was very fortunate, not because of me, but I won over 20 awards for teaching. In fact, I think one earned every award that Purdue had. And some of them, I won them with $2,500 in cash. It was kind of nice. Most of them are things you hang on the wall. but uh, Some are monetary. Yeah, but there were about 25 of them that I had. I could go over the list. I'm not going to. But, but that always obviously made me happy and right. do the right kinds of things. But I was fortunate because I had people like John Day and M. Weiler who worked with me together, and we worked closely. And I couldn't have had better mentors and right. put me into it. By then, I had been promoted and a full professor, and I was on my own way. And so I was peculiar in a way, and I had this whole niche of economics and economics education in the business school. But I think that helped the school a lot and the students. 
And so that's really how I got into Purdue University. And then, of course, when you do that, you find that there are people all over the country in the business school, and I became the dean, and I became head of the, some of the organizations as a business dean and so on. And I enjoyed that, but no, no longer could I do the teaching, which I love so much. Uh, and, you know, it became very, very busy. The more you go, the busier it was. And finally, uh, I came to the point where I said, you know, I, I want to enjoy my life. And uh, deans have some real pressure on them all the time. And I stayed for eight or nine years, and I had been interim before that. And they had a couple other ones that were not accepted, and they finally said, well, you do it. And, and I did stay. And I enjoyed it. I had a good time. I could have stayed longer if I wanted, but I was getting to the point where I wanted to enjoy teaching. So when I retired... Or stepped down. Probably. Yeah, stepped uh -huh. down. We had this program of teaching for five years, and I did it teaching half-time for five years. Right. And I really enjoyed that. And I had a wonderful time. I met a lot of the students. And, and some of the pleasures because of that, and in earlier days, uh, when I would travel overseas or any place in the country, I would always meet people who were students because they were such large classes, and that was always a pleasure. So I had a wonderful job, a wonderful place to live. Could I have ever promised or designed or expected that I would be in a community like this and these things happen? No. Yeah, Just right. don't know how it happens. Let me ask you a couple of things about sure. uh, the, when you were the dean. Were, were some of the... Um, this was a quote that I uh, picked up. You know, uh, your challenges are the whole role of internationalization of the university and implementing the boom, the boom of technological changes throughout the school and the issue of lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. uh, were these were some of the things that you faced when you stepped in there. Absolutely. And did you make any comment on that, particularly the lifelong learning, because that's really gone with... Uh, yeah. The university place and some of the facilities that right. uh, well, enhance that today. Mm -hmm. Well, we had the master's program, then, then I moved. Yeah, I, that was I, another I, I kind of moved completely out of the economics place, and I was more in the business role. Sure. And I missed the other, but I, I enjoyed the other East as well. And first of all, we had a great reputation for Purdue University, and that helps everything. And we had good people like M. Weiler and a couple who did the foundation. And so we were always ranked very high in the quality of the business school. And uh, so we had lots of people, students coming in and being a business school too can type. We also had a lot of support from businesses who provided money and scholarships and so on. So everything went really quite well. And uh, they started with that old building over there. And M. Weiler was fortunate to find this gentleman from Chicago or Indianapolis who made the money. Herman Cranner? Yes. Yeah. Interesting person. Did yeah. you get a chance to meet him? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We talked with him. We, we had to listen to him, too, because one of his responsibilities. Didn't he give a series of lectures? Every once a and year. And it's been published? We have yes, in the archives. Right. Yeah, that's right. And so we did that, and then he passed away, and of course, M. passed away. Yeah. But. Uh, then my whole life had changed to from economics education, which was a strong area, but into this one of, of management. And involved in this for many, many years in the school grew and we had gone internationally, which we really hadn't done. Were you was it the German campus? Did that come during yes. your watch? Yes it was. How did can you how did that come about? Did they come to Cranard or uh, to extent, yes. We thought we wanted to grow and then there were some alumni who had gone to our school and from Germany. And he played a key role, I can't think of his name now. And with him and others, that's how we get that one started. And, and then Don King was put in charge of it, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Yeah. yeah. And Don was involved in that. And uh, so those things expanded in California and Florida and China, or not China, but in that part of the world. We didn't do a whole lot. They're doing more now than after I left. And the current dean was mm -hmm. the did a lot of work in that area. Mm -hmm. I was doing a good job in that. What about that uh, weekend masters? That started on your watch. Did that come about because you, you alums or people wanted to have some short court or something like that? or Competition. Right, okay. And providing the needs for people. Uh, we, we still are a state university. Right. And there were a lot of people who could do that if we had a weekend and not have to, they could go up from, from Chicago or any of the towns in here as well as Chicago and those places 
And so it met that kind of a need, and that John Day was involved in that. And sure. Did a very good time, and we just continued to follow it and expand it, and it did very well. And, and, and they too became great supporters of the school over time. And one of the things that we hadn't done much prior was the importance of getting outside money. And we spent that brings up yeah, right, advancement in your development. That's yeah. all changed over time, yeah, certainly we, since you and I have been here. We did a lot of that work and were very, very successful in getting yeah. money. Business were happy to do it if they could get good students there. Sure, sure. And uh, so that was a whole new realm. And, and so, you know, you're, when you're in economics, it's nice you focus on this, and suddenly you're in a whole series of business right. that, that are economic in nature, but not, not in the economic sense. Sure. And so I really was in the business school for the last 20, 20 so right. 30 years. Was it on your watch? Is that when they built that building, the executive uh, building that's right next to the Craner? Yeah. That, where, that's where the they, weekend classes are? They were are. just starting that then, okay. and then during mine, we began that one over here. Okay, okay. And when I left, it was just about done. Sure. So we had good facilities all the time, and, uh, and that makes, you know, students are impressed with good quality, student, right. student, uh, things such as that, and that helped us enormously. Right. So it was a tremendous, never in my life, did I say I would be at one place there and stay there all my life? Here, I'm still there. <laughs> there but are others. Things I'm just at nicely the fell. First in economics, had lots of programs in economics education, and then we moved into management and all the growth issues there, which the predecessors had done such a good job and a good foundation. Where the people who had grad graduated the school were very proud of it and, and helped to get good students into it. Right. Do you want me a couple comments about the library, about the librarian, the first librarian? John Halkus was the first librarian. Oh, yeah. John was a wonderful person. And as I mentioned, we both had the same background, and we kind of got together close and worked very hard and very helpful. And I do remember the story, and I'm sure you heard it, when I think it was John Day, either John or his predecessor, but when they started going, he said, look, here's $60,000. You go out there and get the best books for business that you can. You've heard that story. Sort of. B bits and drabs. Go ahead. So I remember that. He went out there, and he, and of course he knew all the, a lot of the Germans and could buy a lot of the, the, the Dutch and all of them, could buy a lot of books there, as well as Chicago. And he just did a marvelous job with limited resources and used them very, very well to begin the library there, which right. was on that second floor. That's right. Exactly. And Didn't he buy all those the special books that, that books the bookstore in in London that was going out of business? Yes, and he has some of those which are very valuable now. I, I it's know. wonderful. Every about every year or two, I get a chance to go look at it again. And they're <laughs> marvelous books. He got a really good price on that. <laughs> oh yes. You were very, the school has been very fortunate ever since yeah, then. <laughs> so, so that dealt with that issue, and uh, and then of course the students began to grow and grow and more as as and as I left, it began to get more right. and more. And, so they had, we started, I was in the early phase of this building mm -hmm. and uh, got a lot of support from people. And for the first time, we really got a lot of people whom we had dressed, worked with the last 10 years to become big donors because they were CEOs of big corporations. Right. And we, we were then in a position to bring in the money. And it worked very well. And so we basically just about finished that. and then. I had been there nine years, and I had taught before, and you know those things are very strange. I okay. said, I've got about four or five years where I'd really like to go back to teaching for a while. And so I did that after nine, ten years in the dean's office, many years before that. Sure. And uh, the building was com then completely finished, and uh, everything was in good shape for it. Right. I had a couple of people I wanted to ask about Do you, uh, the, uh, for the research, the credit research center, Robert Johnson. That had been going for some time. It doesn't yes. exist anymore, though, does it? Uh, no. It, it, when he, it's easy to he see. moves to the East Coast. Right. I remember meeting he, him. He remarried. You may recall that. And yeah. He had, he had a very good program, which worked very, very nicely for a long time. And that was housed in the school? Was it Yes, it was. In the new building. It was in the new, okay. Yes. All right. But then he remarried after his wife died, and they decided to go out there and work for a little while and took it with them. And by that time, because he was an expert in that area. He was the best known in the country in that area. Right. But he got old. That's right. And, and uh, I don't know whether it exists anymore or where it does. Sure. But I remember that because I niche, met him. It was very useful for, for Craner, kind of in a little city here. And, 
right. but close enough to Chicago. Sure, that's right. That's so he did a wonderful right. job. A uh, Jay Wiley is another one you're long. When you're long oh you yeah, know. Jay was very in, involved with me because when I came here, Jay was uh, kind of the uh, one of the ad key administrators, and he was awfully strong in economics education, and he wanted to get me involved with it too. And uh, so I took some courses from Jay and got to know him. And, and as I said, when I had planned to go, uh, there were so many opportunities they wanted me to stay that I, I did. Just, I was really concerned. Was that the right thing to do? And I'm happy I did. And so I got to know Jay very well. And uh, we did a lot of things together. And uh, he was a wonderful person. M. Vial and Jay worked together too a lot. In fact, uh, he must have been one of the early. Yes, he um, was. Very faculty early. members yeah. in the school. This is the old textbook that M. Weiler and I put together right for the heck of it. Uh -huh. And then I remember that took another funny number. That I, thought, I think that's what I remember. I, that. I thought I took another crazy book. I thought this was funny. I didn't even know about it. <laughs> that happened to come out. This is you on the cover? Yeah, and well, look what it is, though. It's a faculty and staff process. Yeah. I know, I know, <laughs> right. I, they, uh, they, I don't even know if, the, if they asked me about that, but they, <laughs> they printed that thing. And I thought, no, why do you? Why, why and of course, that? your name does not appear. You just no. happen to look yeah. at it, you know, right? Oh, yeah, it's like, oh, I that didn't realize that. That was funny, but I got it a is. kick out of it, because I did teach in those large classes. <laughs> it's great. And that's where I your have Your children to, love that. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't do it. I spent not time on that. I started, I went with them. So they had to listen. <laughs> That's uh, great. And so I they moved you. around them all the time. And I, in fact, I, I thought And the color adds to it as well. Yeah, the color I thought the other, the other day, a couple of weeks ago, I was around for months, and I talked to some people, and some of them still large classes. They all had their computers. And uh, I am very happy I'm not there because you don't know what they're doing. They say, we're taking notes from you. But I have a very large believe that that's probably not the case. They can write letters, they can do everything, and you can't walk around doing that right. like it. It's that's a so. different uh, venue. So it's a different challenge and opportunity, and I'm glad I wasn't there. But I did that as well as smaller courses. Sure. But then until I got into teaching, it just turned into the dean's office. It just changed my life and got to know a lot of deans all over the country, and, and that was a, a great experience for me as right. well. Right. And the school did reasonably well during the time, and so we never did leave it. Right. Let's talk about a couple of your awards. You mentioned the, the teaching awards, but you also got that class of 1922, the Helping Student Prize. Yeah. Which is really nice. Yes, it was That's very a nice. unique. It's only given once a year, and there's yeah. money that comes along with that, yes. correct? Yes, right, that is. Uh, well, you know, I, I had nothing to do with it, and... Uh, but you enjoyed it. I was very much enjoyed yeah. it. The and money you got was that, nice. Uh, International Paper Foundation Award as well. That's right. As I said, I just out of curiosity, I, in my office, I had a pile of all these things. I looked at it. And there were over 20 of them. That's of great. one kind or another. And in fact, I think I must have taken every award that Purdue had at that day, you know, over that time. Sounds good to me. Okay. But uh, that was just fortunate too. Here's an, the one of the newest ones, that George Washington Honor Medal in 1998. Oh, yeah. How did yeah. that, uh, did you tell us a little about that one? Yeah, that would dealt with uh, it's business. E economic uh, education. Yeah, it uh -huh. was a business schools, a, a business school faculty members program, and so that was sort of a national program for that one. And uh, you know, you're always surprised to those things because you don't know about them. You just do your work. But just, I did. But I was, they contact you. Or oh yes, <laughs> yeah. They had a special <laughs> award where, you, where they did it. Oh. And. Uh, that was a very nice prize because it was a national prize. Right. And yes. We had lots of other ones, but, uh, and but mainly that's because we we did a lot of work in economics as well to help people become better economic professors and so on. We had a group of people that would have workshops for them. Some of them were economics, some of them were social sciences who taught seniors in high school, and we d and we had all kinds of money from the federal government for that. And there we, must have been a real lag, that, and the they country. really went behind it and supported they it. They really did. It was a it was a wonderful time to be there right. because I didn't have right to ask anybody. Edge. You know, Dean, can you give me some money? It was not a problem. And uh, what's the current status of it as you look at it today? Does it seem to be? It's pretty I think good, it's good, very, good. very, in terms of getting resources, it's very very tough. Very very tough. 
but I think this, you know, this, I'm not sure how much economics, again, is whether it's kind of drifted back a little bit. I hope it hasn't, because it's certainly important, as we know, probably more than ever. But uh, there was a real period of time when we got a lot of social science professors to incorporate economics into their courses. That's basically what we did. At the, at the academic, at the college level. At the college and university right. level. But you did some work with the textbooks. That you found in uh, secondary schools there wasn't very much on economics. You did some early studies no, on I that No, I didn't area. do any for the second. There Not for secondary? No. Oh. I, these were all college. College, okay. Yeah. And M. Weiler and I did that together. Mm -hmm. That worked out very nicely. We developed some programs through the Economics Education Program, which was, I don't know, I think it still exists, of course, in the East Coast they had it. And I was on that for a number of years, and we had our meetings there for those kinds of things. So there was plenty to do, and it was just a wonderful job. Those books are really great. And I was just pleased that Purdue was open enough to do these kinds of things, and uh, and they always have been, which yeah. what makes Purdue, yeah. I think, a good right. school, too. Yeah, right. Um, you also were involved in the community. Uh, you know, I'm served on the St. Elizabeth's Medical Center Advisory Board and Lafayette yes. Life and some things yes, like that. Yes, I did so that, too. Yeah. And uh, I enjoyed those opportunities because it, it, you know, I had plenty of students, plenty of faculty members, and it also gave you the opportunity to work with the business people in the community. Mm -hmm. And as of that, we were able to incorporate more business people into our programs here because they don't say it, but they say, you know, here, I'm a businessman. Can't you do something for us? And so we became more involved, I think, with, with the business school as well, S short programs and so on created for that purpose and uh, that was very important because they they feel that here we are in the school but who gets well and you then you learn their needs what you know and sometimes you know they, they don't come to the fore but by yes. being on a committee like that you find it find yes. it so we had lots of men, men meetings and met a lot of people over time and it was good for me to be on the boards as well sure. because that gave me the foundation for working right exactly and uh, again I, I think I was very fortunate to be at a good time when there were needs of that kind and right. You know, it's and you were able to handle it. And there were resources available like they aren't now. I was just happy to be born at the right. right time. Let's talk a little about your family. Um, you have uh, children. Did, did they go to Purdue? or? Uh, I, well, my wife did, <laughs> as you know. Yeah. Uh, both of my sons. My, Where was your my, wife? My going? son and daughter. Where was your, is your wife from Indiana? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, and I met her when she was at Purdue teaching. Or, uh, not teaching, but in my class. But as I said, I didn't do anything till after I had been out of, for, out of class for a while. And our children, both of them said they would really like to go away to Indiana. And we, my wife and I said, that's probably good. Because you know, if you come back here, it's the same old story. They've been at Purdue all the time. And IU is a wonderful school. And they both loved it, and they did it very well. And so both of them, and it's close. So uh, we, you know, in a way we miss them a little bit, but I think it was the best thing to do. And so did my wife, and so did the kids. And uh, now my son is in business in, in Florida, and my daughter uh, is married, and she has two children, and still does a little bit of work, and she's in Arizona. Well, that's so very good. Too far to go. Yeah, the two warm spots I said earlier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell us about your retirement, uh, what you've been doing in retirement. And incidentally, before that, did you enjoy the halftime? Maybe it could have gone yes. longer. I, you, did you I, stay the whole five years? I, I did five years, yeah. and I enjoyed it. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, sometimes yeah. I wish I hadn't completely stopped, because I did enjoy right. teaching a lot. And looking back now, I probably would have done a little more of it. But, uh, you know, I had been busy all the time in the dean's office, and then it was kind of nice the first five years. And it wasn't fair to my wife either because we couldn't travel as much and so on other than business travel. So I decided, well, you know, I was already past 65 already there that, hey, we've got some other things to do. So uh, I had some hobbies, stamps and things of these kinds of things. And then we, we actually went out for a while and we bought a place in Saugatuck. I was originally from Grand Rapids. And so we had a place in Saugatuck that we went sometime in the summer times. And then we also purchased a place in uh, Arizona. And so we would go there and first of December and come back in April or May. 
and that was fun. But uh, at some point, you, know, you say, hey, wait a minute, I just don't want to do that much traveling anymore and making sure that the lights are on this place and that place. So we got rid of it all. We have our home where we are. And now we are just going to do, in fact, we're going to go this year for about six, eight, eight weeks, eight to nine, eight to ten weeks. But we're renting, and it's some friends of ours in Indianapolis, and our, that's near where our daughter yeah, is, but not too close. And uh, we'll probably do the same, visit our son. And this is a better situation because, you know, when you're younger, you don't mind worrying about a house there and if the water leaks and... At some point, you say, hey, this isn't, this isn't going to work anymore. That's right. You go through that stage, right? Yep, yeah, that's exactly what happens. Right, exactly. And so now, now we're spending more time at home doing more reading and just enjoying things, uh, go to various programs and friends that we've known over the do years. You still really do you go to the athletics football or basketball? I do. I, actually, I've gone to all but one game. Uh, what, football or basketball? Football. Oh, okay. And we're gone for, with, with basketball. And yeah. it, it's, a ru- it's strange because we first start getting off, and I get so many tickets free. I, I, I haven't bought a ticket, and I've gone five of the six so far because people that we know are all busy, and they <laughs> call. But I've gone to a lot of games. On the other hand, uh, it's different now, too, because when you're dean, uh, when you had the football, certain deans, you would always go with them to the football game and so on. And that after... 10 years or so, that gets a little weary too, and you can't go on your own with the people you want to be. So now we just do it openly and freely. And, and sadly, there are so many easy seats available right now because of their <laughs> losing rate. There's no problem, but it's been fun. Yeah. And a lot of our friends did. And then we moved out to this little community uh, on the north side here. Uh, off, you know where the. Uh, We're so Westport? Is it Westport? Yeah, we've been there for nine years now. It's a great place. Yes. A lot of our peers are there, and they're virtu- virtually all retired. We play golf together. And it's a good place so to So you be. enjoy that. It's yeah. nice. What about a Purdue tradition? Do you have a Purdue tradition that, that you'd like to share? And also an outstanding event. I'll let you if you'd like to do that. What was the second one? The outstanding event. Oh. And you can have more than one. Sometimes people say, I can't give you one. I said, well, you can have more. Yeah, let me see. Well, I, I was fortunate to win a lot of awards of that kind, but but I was just very proud to be part of, of, of Purdue, and in that the Craner School became a well-regarded business school among other business schools, as well as in the school. And uh, we had a lot of relationships with other people at the schools as well, had some people teach in them. And, uh, so we were happy it, it, it fit into, you know, normally this was an engineering school. And kind of historically, some of the schools were sometimes viewed as second tier because it was all engineering. And I think one of our goals was to make sure that economics, which is quite different, and although it's not completely on there, be right. its own school with high ranking. Right. And I think we were successful in the people before me and the people to help to right. do it. And that's very important because if you want to get good students, you have to be recognized. Right. Right. And we have such a good fortune of having the Purdue name to begin with, because everybody knows of Purdue. Right. And uh, a lot of schools are not known at Purdue, but Purdue, everybody knows. And uh, it's funny. That helps a lot. And, and it's a large place, you get to so many people. I've been in Europe, I've been in California. People stop and say, hi, I am so-and-so. And I went to Purdue, or I knew of Purdue. And it never stops. Right. I go to a someplace in California a couple of weeks ago to check in in a hotel. This man had went through the, ch- the program at Purdue and said, hello, I know you. I went to this program. It, it's great, isn't it? It, it makes really you feel is. warm about it. Right. <laughs> because it's not a school that just stays in the town here. That's right, they exactly. go all over that's it. Right. And that's what's nice about it. Global. So it's, and it's a wonderful school and highly recognized by its name right. and the programs that it has. So that made my career be a, a, a challenging and an exciting career both. Right. And we still uh, see a lot of alumni, and we did a lot of alumni people. I'm not involved anymore in it, but we do see them occasionally. Sure. It just At some stops. events or things, that's right. Yeah. And to come again for the football, it's that fun because you always meet people. I know. And they're here for a football game, and then you chat with them. They may be from Missouri, they can be any place. They like to come back once or so for the year. I know. 
So I it's, agree. It's, I it's understand. a place of warmth. You know, you say, engineering school, is that going to be cold? <laughs> uh, contrary, not. And the others, right. the education programs, the others have, you know, really improved enormously in our good schools and broadened large, right. large, I hope not too many more growing because it's pretty big. Right. Although everyone's going through tough times now with the finances, but right. Purdue's not alone. Right. So it's a wonderful place to be, and I, I could not have selected a better job, and it's so ironic, I happened to see that little flyer, and Larry Senich was the guy that was teaching economics education, and I got to know him very, very well, and he's died, but... Uh, it was, was a good beginning for you. It was great, and, right. uh, and having to, my wife there, to be down there, I mean, if I were to go back and say, how could you design for yourself a, a happier, more fortunate for me, I couldn't think of anything right. better. And I really like this university. It's sure. good. University of Michigan is good. Michigan State is good. Uh, Purdue is special. That's right. And I'll leave it. I'll let any cl any final remarks or something I didn't cover that you would like to share? No, other than the fact that there are a lot of good people still in the School of Economics or heavily involved in programs and this university is just doing well. And you uh, keep your contacts, which is nice. Yeah, we do right. see them come by right. every now and then. And uh, a lot of our good friends. Uh, one of the person I think you did, Phil uh, Nelson. Right. We're very close friends to Nelson. In fact, they were at our house Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Is he is he not in residence at the moment? They got their place in Michigan, right. don't they? Right. That's his only house now. But he comes on weekends, and they stay with us office. Oh. And his wife yes. goes yes. there. Yes, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed meeting. And him. so he's a good friend, and so we still and we go up there periodically. And and they'll, he's been coming in about two or three weeks again, and they'll go to the games. And Super. So we've got a real tie with those folks. And I was Good. pleased to see that you were on that yes, same list. Yes, I did. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, I, Dr. I hope Weedon. this was what you were talking yes, about. Yes, absolutely.